is Alice. Starring Patty and Garrity. <laughs> still daylight so it'll be bright and shiny when he brings Mr. Otis here tomorrow. Your mother sure picked a bad time to go on a vacation. Is mommy having another baby? Another baby? Gosh, no. She's just visiting your Aunt Matilda down south. <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? Well, last time Daddy painted the fence, it was when Junior was born. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure hope Mr. Otis turns out to be as cute as your baby brother. <laughs> On the 6.45 train tomorrow. Thanks, Colonel. It's not homemade. I'm going to meet him at the station and bring him here. I'll have the house shining like a brand new penny. Is Mr. Otis going to make his speech talk here instead of the new town, huh? No, honey. His booking agent wrote me that he insists on a nap before each lecture. A nap? Does he have to be hand-fed, too? <laughs> and Leland Otis happens to be a famous and internationally known wit, raconteur, essayist, and author. Now, Alice, honey, I realize this is a little early in the game to start asking you, but I want everything to run smoothly. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, Daddy, because I got a secret surprise and need a dollar and 71 cents, and I'll be as good as anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a catch in this someplace, but I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> well, I better get to that fence. Oh, I'll get it. Mr. Holliday, I got a truckload of fertilizer for you. Fertilizer? Who ordered fertilizer? Oh, I did. I've been noticing how poorly the front lawn looks, so I sent for some of my favorite fertilizer, made out of fermented soybeans. <laughs> fermented soybeans? You can just smell the power in it. Yeah, I bet you can. <laughs> well, that's very thoughtful of you, Colonel, but I don't think Mr. Otis would appreciate it. I mean, you know, he wouldn't be as enthusiastic as I am. The smell? <laughs> well, I reckon we can store it in the garage until Mr. Big leaves. You do that, Colonel. You just do that, huh? I'll show you where it is. <laughs> Old enough to go to summer camp. I'm old enough, too. 
And I think it's mean of you, Alice, to rub it in just because my parents can't afford twenty dollars and I can't go. Gosh, Lori, don't cry. Besides, we got a whole week before camp. And maybe something will happen, like a secret surprise. And you will be able to go. Maybe. Hey, let's play follow the leader. All right, Lori? All right. I'm the leader. Tell me, my good man, is this by any revolting chance the residence of one Chet Holiday? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Why don't you watch where it's going? Look at this! M. Leland Otis. Oh, 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 sir! Are you challenging the accuracy of my memory? You distinctly told me River Glen on the 15th. What were you using, an Aztec calendar? Me. <laughs> That's his booking agent, the man who arranges his lectures. Five minutes in this rural community, and I was assaulted by a bag of evil-smelling fertilizer, a jet-propelled baby carriage, a bucket of paint, and five feminine high-jumpers. <laughs> oh, where was Mr. Holiday? <laughs> he was in charge of a clam bake. No, I'm leaving by the first ox cart. I doubt if they have any other means of transportation in this primitive community. He's going away, Daddy? He can't do this to me. Now, how do I get out of here? Oh, Mr. Otis, you can't leave now. Can't? I'm leaving if I have to travel by pogo stick. <laughs> but your lecture. The, the hall is sold out. The whole town will be there. I even got a new dress, not counting Daddy's tie. That, my brash young thing, is your problem. Well, I wore myself to a frazzle who'll get that fertilizer out of sight. <laughs> not quite, sir. I'm leaving immediately. That's not fair! Alice, please. It's not my daddy's fault you came early. It's nobody's fault but your own. You ought to be ashamed. Uh, uh, Mr. Otis, what's your new book about? It's called My Life with the Earth People. <laughs> and the chapter on children is entitled The Immature of the Species. Oh, really? That's very interesting. I'd have to be up to my neck in Mountain Dew to read that hogwash. <laughs> of Guaf, sir, millions of readers are waiting with money in hand for my next book. Twenty-five translators are standing by to render it into as many languages. And my publishers expect the finished product in 48 hours. And at this critical juncture, with the book incomplete, here I stand, at the very end of the world, about to lose 24 irretrievable hours of my unique life Talking to you, sir. Why don't you stay overnight with us? Here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then he can ride all night like Daddy does sometimes. He can have my room, Daddy. I can stay with Sally tonight. We'll all clear out first thing in the morning. But you can have the whole house to yourself. You can write on your book without interruption. Why don't you, Mr. Otis? Well... I won't tell anybody on the committee that you're here. And I'll come and get you tomorrow, just in time for the lecture. Not a second before. On those terms, I'm forced to accept. Boy, bring my bag. <laughs> Alice said you could sleep in her bunk bed, but I thought you'd better have something more your size. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I'll hang up your suit for you. I'm perfectly capable of hanging it up myself, thank you. Yes, sir. Well, if you need anything during the night, please call. I won't call, I'll shout. Yes, sir. Well, good night. I hope so. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> 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 
There was a creature sitting on my chest. <laughs> oh, that must have been Alice's little monkey. That settles it. Call me a taxi. Oh, Mr. Otis, please. Mr. Otis, we're terribly sorry. With the lawsuits I have in mind for this family, you've only begun to be sorry. <laughs> What's the matter? My manuscript. The whole chapter on children is missing. Oh, well, don't worry, Mr. Otis. The, the Colonel and I will turn the whole house upside down looking for it. it. It must be here somewhere. We'll find it. Now, please, Mr. Otis, please try to get some rest. Let's go find that monkey. <laughs> You know something, Colonel? It's a funny thing. But Alice is at Sally's house. Now that's over two miles from here. But somehow her presence is inescapable. <laughs> <laughs> be in this place. Believe me, Mr. Otis, it isn't in the house anywhere. The Colonel and I were up all night long looking for it. Never slept a wink. One month. One month of my life went into creating that chapter. You'd better find it. Over six. Yes, sir, Mr. Otis. We are doing our best, sir. Your best is abominable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
But don't you know? What have you come to plague me with this time? Get that thing Jezebel struck. We found it. Oh. Well, which one tried to eat it? You or the monkey? Oh, you sure don't know much about kids. Go, disappear, get on your little broom and fly away. <laughs> that way. Please, little girl, I've got work to do. Me and the kids read some of that stuff you wrote. We don't think you're so smart. Really? <laughs> yes, we don't even think you're a writer. We think you're a big fake. How did you find out? Huh? You're right. I'm not a writer. I'm a bank robber. A bank robber? It's the only way I could buy bread for my wife and children. Gosh. Dapper Dan Moran is my handle. Handle? My real name. Oh. I knew N. Leland Otis was coming here, so I put on these false whiskers, came a day early, to take his place. False whiskers? One tug, and off they come. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to case the joint, get the layout, and make my plans to rob the bank. The River Good Savings and Loan Bank? The very one. But that's my daddy's bank. He has all his money there. I, I don't like robbing banks, young lady, but with little girls like you around, I obviously can't make a living any other way. Well, you got to do, Mr. Dapper Dan. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to lock you in your room. Gosh! But Mr. Dapper Dan, robbing a bank is the nice thing to do. Well, I'm sure there are nicer things, but I can't think of one right now. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed doing your kind of work? I need the money. <laughs> Now, in. Golly! I'll even forget the visit. You said you needed money, Mr. Dapper Dan. There's $18.29 in here. Maybe that'll help your hungry wife and children. Then you can start life all over again. Where did this money come from? We were saving it for a reason. A very special reason. But we decided the money would be better to feed your hungry wife and hungry children. Better than sending Lori to summer camp, even though she's dying to go. Which one of you is Lori? Me. And you'd give up going to summer camp just for me? Yes, sir. I wouldn't feel right having lots of fun at summer camp while your wife and children are going hungry. Thanks for saving the money for me to go. We still needed a dollar and twenty-nine cents. Alice, Laurie, all of you. 
Sometimes an old bank robber like me learns a lesson in the most unexpected way. I want you to keep Laurie's campman. But Mr. Dapper did it. Your hungry wife and hungry children. Well, <laughs> every bank robber worth his salt has eating money hidden away for emergencies like a hungry wife and children. <laughs> Don't worry about old Dapper Dan. But tell me, why didn't you call the police to capture me? Golly, that wouldn't have been good at all. And you would have gotten in trouble. And everybody would have been mad at my daddy because you pretended to be the real Mr. Otis to my house, and everything would have been a great big mess. Yeah, it certainly would. Now, if you sweet little ladies will excuse me, I'll get ready to take it on the lamb. What have you done now? Please don't ask me, Daddy, because I can't tell you. But everything's got to be all right. Honest, Daddy. You'll see when the real Mr. Otis gets here. The real Mr. Otis? You'll be able to tell if he's real, because his whiskers won't come off. <laughs> oh, dear. Has he come yet? No, not yet. I still don't understand what you've been trying to tell me, Holiday. If Mr. Otis was at your house today, why did he leave? Well, it's kind of hard to explain, Mr. Hodges. You see... Mr. Otis! Which one of you charming gentlemen is Mr. Holiday? <laughs> Mr. Of course! Well, what happened? Why did you leave this afternoon? Leave? I've only just arrived. Oh, then this distinguished gentleman must be Colonel Dixon of Georgia. What happened to you and this pert young miss? I'm Alice. Gosh, you look just like Dapper Dan exactly. <laughs> Alice! It's all right, Mr. Holiday. Children always like to pull my whiskers. <laughs> they don't believe they're real. But they are real. You can't be Dapper Dan. Would you like to try again, my dear? <laughs> Gee, Mr. Otis, I'm sorry. But I just had to prove it. Of course you did. Oh, by the way, my dear, I always make it a point to give a little girl a gift just before I lecture. There. Gee, thanks! But don't open it until I've finished my lecture. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Otis, I'll, I'll show you the way. Now, on the subject of children. <laughs> there are some foolish people who maintain that children are naturally cruel and selfish. But they're terribly wrong. For I have found in them real selflessness, honest emotions, simple decency, courageous loyalty, and the truest kind of forgiveness. Would that we all could remain forever as they are. Hi, you I can open this. Wonder what it is. Gosh, a dollar and twenty-nine cents. Just what I needed for summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> Know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 